know, when you first get hired on, they tell you the kids are studying you. I study them daily. Their movements, behavior, what pisses them off, what makes them cry, what makes them happy, what makes them sad. As a young male, I realize it's not enough African-American males in this world being productive. It bothers me to my core sometimes. It has to be a lot more people that are willing to give a damn. A beautiful day for football. This is my first year as a head coach, and I feel like this is my tip. I really ain't just seen success. Not with my own eyes. Good morning, sleep with my boy. You gonna come up for brush up? The family I grew up with, I mean, it was a good family. I ain't had no father. I mean, I had a father, but he wasn't around. I didn't really have nothing. I think my mom described me as an ungrateful child. Disrespectful, don't want to listen to nobody. The reason I'm here is because I had choices and I chose the wrong choices. It was my fault. I was just trying to grow up too fast. Kids are here because they were sentenced by the state of Texas. We have some of the most aggressive kids in the state of Texas here. We no longer take misdemeanors. So the kids that come in are kids that have done more serious crimes and other less restrictive environments have failed them or they have failed those environments. Fix your collar, on your, your jacket collar. Strap your shoes up, man. You've been here for 15 years. Man, strap your shoes up. It all started when I was in elementary school. 13, my first time locked up. Got locked up again. Then I got locked up again, and I got locked up again. I was about 14. I started hanging out with the wrong crowd. My first time getting kicked out of school was in the first grade because I peed on a kid. Second grade, I think I cut a kid with some scissors. When I first got locked up for like a month, I was like 10 years old. Third grade, brought him back to school. Fourth grade, brought a baby gun to school. I was like 11 years old. My dad called me as a runaway. I said I went to jail six, seven times, but the seventh time I came here. Even though these young people have committed a serious crime, they are still mandated by the state of Texas to attend school. We are Lone Star High School North. We're located on Gainesville State School campus. These are what I call the forgotten students. We are kind of like the law schools. No one know about us. Do you know me? You know my rules? Yes, I'm going to go to my classrooms again. Necklace, pictures, girlfriend picture, don't bring into the classroom. That's contraband. Your hand is supposed to be where? On the desk, not inside your pants. The common denominator that these young men have is nine out of ten times they grew up without their father. Very good. Particularly for African American boys and girls. And when those fathers are absent from the homes, we know that our young people turn to gangs for leadership and for mentoring and drug distribution. And we see that across our inner cities all across America. I think one of the most important things with dealing with this population is they have been beaten and battered, so what would scare us is just daily life for them. You know when you're entering a minority community. It looks different. 
You cross the track and it changes. The housing stock, no sidewalks, no street lights, no curbs and gutters. Where well, I grew up in, it was rough. Gunshots, Section eight, gangs, food stamps. hustling. It smelled like exhaust. If I'd have knew what pollution was when I was a kid, I'd say it smelled polluted. Texas was segregated well into the 1960s. It's worse for black youth than it was when I was coming up in that segregated society because what you had were caretakers. Today, young black kids don't have that same opportunity or that number of people who care about them. They don't have the heroes often in their communities because the doctor had to live in the same neighborhood you did. Well now, they've left the black community and basically only come back for three things, barbecue, haircut, and church. I didn't grow up calling a man daddy or dad. My grandma raised us. You know, I'm a mama's boy. I do what my mama say. I knew a lot of kids who didn't even know they daddy. And I got my daddy. My daddy's like, he one of the kings of the hood. My father, he in jail, he doing like 30 years. I only seen my mother one time in life. There are men out there trying to help you. But what many of them, like I have decided, they realize you, they can't help them all. And so we measure it in ones, not in tens. I've got to be satisfied with that one. We're one of the few juvenile correctional facilities across the country that offers athletics. I mean, these are still kids. When I come out here, I don't even see the fence. You know, they're out here, they're just like any other kid in high school, living their dreams and stuff. But then when it's over and you have to say, line up, they forget Let's that they're actually they're locked up. I think the biggest difference since I started in 96 in the juvenile justice system is that in the beginning it was everything was black and white. You do this, you, you move now. I'll tell you when, I'll tell you how. And then it's moved now into building of relationships. In Texas, football's king. Everything else takes a back seat. Football's a chance for them to learn how to be part of something, how to communicate with others, how to be part of a team, how to be around people trying to do positive things, just being part of a society. Coach, you only got one quarterback? Got three. Big Corlin is the man. But I can never let him know he's a man. <laughs> I always gotta let him know that you in competition. Big Corlin is a good kid. He didn't have a jacked up life. You can tell by the look on his face. Yeah. You know, he doesn't know how to handle adversity very well. Yeah. Took them 17 years to get to where they're at now. It's mm -hmm. gonna take 17 plus years to get them away from him. Get that, get that, look at the wall! Look at the wall! Good job, baby! Somebody gotta break the chain. Somebody gotta break the chain. Somebody man. gotta break the chain. Now since I'm here, like, I'm doing like what I always wanted to do, play football, like starting to think like I need to do better, especially with my family, because I know they need some help too, so. And I was talking to my dad the other day about my older brother who's locked up. Been, been served 25 years in prison. I, and he beats himself up about it because he's like, damn, where did I go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> where yeah. did I go wrong with this? I'm like, dad. I mean, my dad's an ex-convict. If I can just say one for going to a funeral, I done my job. Yep. I ain't gonna save them all. I already know that. No excuse, Tyler! He said it like me. He did, didn't he? Now if I make a difference in 18, that's a miracle. We've got a budget for uh, equipment, but even though we've got a budget, it's still not enough. All during the year, uh, other coaches, you know, they, they know our condition, so they, they donate things to our school. Brought up TV crew. Man, they doing a documentary at Gainesville. I don't know, now I'd have shaved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are your colors? Black and white. Black and white? Well, there's some black there and white. There it is. Man. There's some water individual oh, bottles in here and stuff inside each one of these coolers. Awesome. That's going to be great. You can man. always need coolers. You bet. But sure. I hope this helps you out. Yes, it will. They've given us like shoes, helmets. We need these helmets. They gave the kids school supply. Man, Mr. Miles, we appreciate no this, problem, man. man. God bless you, God bless you man. Doing. Been going since 6.30 this morning. We got practice this afternoon. That's just the job of a coach. We're just two coaches at the school. Good 
lot of stuff. God, no. Coach Burns being his first year as a head coach, he wants to succeed so bad. What's that right there? Coach, pants. Give me pants, folks. Say, send me Jimbo. You've got that pressure on you to try to win. And I try to challenge them in the right direction. Look, you're going to burn yourself out. What's up, Jay? What you doing in there? I just chill. Comes up on Saturday, work with him. He's here like late at night. And he's doing those things to let them know that he really cares about it. Four, five, six, seven, eight more, so that's 20 pairs of shoes. He, he doesn't know the fact that these kids are incarcerated. He doesn't care that maybe some of them are going to go back out into the community and, and maybe do some stupid thing. You got a little spider on you there. Yeah, go on get it, go on get it. Yeah, yeah. So you gonna let it bite me, huh? Nah, That's how you feel? All he cares about is the fact that what he can do right now to change the kid's life, to make a difference in, in their lives. I don't even know what this is. I'm just saying, oh yeah. <laughs> they, they give him a lot of respect. What I like about football season is there's no blood, there's no crips, it's only tornadoes. <laughs> when we start our football season, you'll see that the kids that play in the first game are not always the kids that play in the last game. And that's what makes it difficult for us to be successful. The behavior that you have to exhibit to be able to get off campus is the exact same behaviors that you have to exhibit to be able to go home. Keep going! Keep going! Work, right, right. Go to work, JP. Go! Go your feet! Go your feet! Go your feet! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Now you're going to come off the ball. Now you're going to sit and react. Hit! Oh, do it again. Hit! 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 There you go. Down, sir. I'm off the ball. You got to come off the ball with a purpose. Let me do the thing for you. You play football. That's what I'm here for. That's what they pay me for, to thank for you. You just do your job. Oh, there it is, right there. Do it again. Somebody messed up. Let me get a new quarterback. Let me get a new quarterback. What you doing? Do it again. Good job. You got to sit inside, square to the line of scrimmage. You got to be looking for that quarterback. You're going to have all this coming at you. Hang on, you to Get on him! Whoa! Now you gotta come off the ball! Come on, come off the ball! Come off the ball! Whoa! Okay! Oh, come on! Good! Whoa! Do it! Everybody in his life, you gotta earn it. Because when you earn it, guess what? You learn how to appreciate it. Because if you going in the same circle today than the day you was yesterday, we in trouble. You're not growing, you're not progressing in life. You're in the same spot that you was two or three weeks ago. And life is about adapting to your situation. If you don't adapt to your situation, you're gonna die. No excuse! No What folks have to understand, these young men are going back to your neighborhood. They're going back into your school system. They're going back into your housing development. And it's important that we teach these young men how to be part of society. Our job is to get the kids to want to do right because they want to. Not out of fear, not out of, of punishment. That doesn't work. They have to do right because they want to do right. A kid like Darius right now, he's kind of a role model and a leader, and he can teach some of these other kids what it means to be successful. I was like, Coach, Jarvay want to play, and then he was like, what stage Jarvay is? And he was like, I know he's fast. And I was like, yeah, he can take my spot when I leave. He was like, he sure can. I'm going to give you that playbook, too. It's up under my bed. When I first got here, I was in trouble all the time, throwing tables and chairs and stuff. And then football team came, and I was like, man, ever since then, I seen how easy it was to stay busy with football and keep getting my stages. On Wednesday, Darius goes to court, and he has the opportunity to go back before the judge that committed him here to say, this is what I've accomplished. It's a serious moment. Like, my life is at stake. This thing's been waiting for you. I'm going to go to the clothing closet, get some clothes, so I can go to court and look presentable. 
when I appeared in front of the judge. Miss Nancy, well, she started her own little mission here. She asked her church for some clothes to help the kids. It went from just a couple pair of slacks to three rooms full of clothes and a closet full of shoes. And the young men are able to leave and they look like college men. Are we good or what? They stretchy. Mm hmm Dress socks. Right, Mr. Oliver? Yeah. Ooh, they start wearing these socks. They start right in. They hurt when you walk. No, ma'am. Turn your collar all the way up. You see, I've already got them tied, so you're going to put your hand right there. Really? Tell me when I'm choking you. How's that? It's not right there. Yes, not good like no, I do like somebody like a president. No, I don't know necessarily the president, but you oh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's very good. The process that I'm about to go through uh, is because I'm turning 19 and I was a juvenile, so I can possibly go home on parole or be placed in prison for the remainder of my sentence. This is such a huge turnaround from where he was at. Lined up in his corner for his court date will be a teacher, a coach, a volunteer. All of them are singing his praises about what this young man has done. I'm gonna treat it like it's a game day. So I'm treating this like we all can. Act like you got sense when you act here. Long time since we played over here, y'all. Long time. Wherever we win or lose this season, technically I already won because I made sure all of them got here to this point. Listen, hey, play with pride, play with heart. Let's, let's get this done so we can go home. Got it? Oh, we're already home. Well, let's, let's get it done so they go home. But we're going to feed them first. We're going to whoop them and feed them. All right. You got it? Right here. Say it with your chest. No excuses. Yeah, all right. Watch the ball. Let's get in here, D-line. Let it fly! Execute! You can't change the plane! Get out! Get out! Come on, go! On the behalf of the Lone Star High School North Tornadoes, we want to thank you for coming. All right, it ain't too often that we get to see or outside people get to come visit us. At the end of the day, it's about getting better because the only way that you're going to survive 10 weeks is together. If you don't, you're going to be fighting each other and the other team. Real quick, Coach. When I say hard work, you say dedication. Y'all got that? Yes, hard work! Dedication! Hard work! Dedication! Hard work! Dedication! Hold on, Tornado. Oh, Y'all no. got, yeah. yeah. got to say what we say now. Y'all got to say what we say now. When I say no excuses, you just say hard work. All right? Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest! No excuses! Let's Everybody make sure the count's face. right. I don't mind if we left one, but we don't need to take one with us. We'll oh, be in no, trouble. No, Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> work, work, work. <laughs> I took one of them old granny showers. I was sitting in the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> I had time to get it. Really yeah. I knew it was just go down and well, I want y'all to push it down there. I got you. I just see it. <laughs> hey, how y'all some criminals and can't take ice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like making sure that these young men know that they do matter. We're gonna make sure you get home and get home a changed man, not the man that you were when you got here. <laughs> we grew up in the neighborhoods I grew up, grew up around the people I grew up around. That's what you do. When you make it to the top, you make sure everybody else makes it with you. Then you move forward together. <laughs> <laughs>